Hello, in this video I want to talk a bit about dreams, dream time, attractions, distractions and all that. Now everybody's familiar with the fact that the natives of Australia um, have a concept we call dream time. Um, what that is exactly I don't know, I'm not part of that tribe, I have a vague concept like everybody else. But we sort of forget that we are living and really practicing dream time in our culture. Um, researchers have come up with a new concept of um, actually like going through a feed or you know browsing or clicking one video going to the next and like going off into tangents is in fact some kind of a dream, um, active dreaming basically while being awake. Um, so in fact we are pretty much spending very much time in our dream time and um, compared to maybe 150 years ago where you really had to work and be focused. So we have sort of become like in the movie Wings of Desire, I think it was called, a German movie where um, some machine was made up that actually gave you um, a clear picture of your dream or something so um, a couple of people got really addicted to that and it sort of ruined their lives <clears throat> and that is something people complain about today for me personally um, I am not into much social media and all that I have never had a personal Facebook uh, I had one for the music site I used to run um, but that was just for promotion and, and such so uh, back in the days people asked me like how do you keep in touch with people I call them uh, I meet them anyway um, today people speak about you know not being online for a week like something of a great journey like it's it's if somebody goes to travel around the world or something it's not a big deal but if you're uh, offline for a week or a month uh, that's something you know like tell me more um, so in a sense we are dreaming and dreaming is not bad it, it's a way of kind of experimenting with the ingredients and come up with visions and ideas like every concept every idea every inspiration everything we think of now when we sort of want to have in the future or anything our ideas of ourselves of other people it's our kind of a dream dreamscape basically and in this day and age, uh, kids are becoming more and more um, um, introduced to this dream um, time thing. And I don't know about the natives of Australia, the Aboriginals, but we have manufactured dreams in many cases. We have TV series, uh, programs, games and all that. Uh, people can spend a lot of time gaming. And, you know, if you ask uh, like a... Uh, Buddhist or a philosopher or something like if, if life in itself is a kind of a dream um, some vague soup of um, chronology and continuity then everything we read and watch and everything is third fourth fifth rate productions but in a sense I'm, I'm not so afraid of like kids watching movies and and things there are many great films and cartoons especially older ones um, it's good for them it it, it uh, gives some kind of um, offshoot in your mind because uh, as we get older life becomes more predictable you know how you wake up you know how you do your things everything is the standard I mean if you if you use your bathroom and you, you sleep over at a luxury hotel it's just a bathroom but it's golden perhaps but it's still like yeah it's it's a bathroom you know the water the, the bathtub and all that it's the same and that kind of creates a monoton, uh, monotonic landscape for us so we are addicted to some kind of a dream time uh, like what's gonna happen in the next episode and, and things like that and but but if, if you think about this for for a long time for a long time or just think about it it's apparent that it's um, like a constant dreaming um, and constant connectivity to news to to everything so in our smartphones 
things become like a, this dream of, um, I don't know, a feed of uh, friends, photographs, family, news, horror stories, tragedies and all that. Um, it's, all, it's all some kind of a dream time. Um, personally, my smartphone has just the basic things I need. So that's why my battery can last for a week. Um, I'm not much of a telephone person, um, SMS person. And um, I, I used to have Twitter. Um, I was never that active, but I sort of made it private and I'm not active anymore. Um, but for me, um, I, I, I can understand what people say when they are, they are saying they're too obsessed with their information flow, the constant sort of dream timing. I mean, imagine like, you know, when uh, before the smartphones, when you took a bus ride or something, and you fell asleep, you entered a, a big dream. I don't know what it's called, it probably has a definition. When you just maybe fall asleep for two, three minutes, you know, have a blunder and um, the, the sort of short span and maybe the tiredness makes a, makes a very interesting scenarios and then you wake up and you're still in the bus. Uh, I think many people are familiar with that. Now people are, of course, um, watching their smartphones and uh, getting the feed, feedback and um, from that. And in a sense, as life is a kind of a dream and we are living the dream, no matter if we're doing that actively or passively and negatively, um, there is no choice. Like life is a dream almost. I, I saw on a car, no, um, I don't know what it was, a big, bigger kind of um, transportation truck and it says something like, you know, don't dream of life, like live your dream or something, a cliche. But I thought that there is no, you have no choice, you're already dreaming, you're already in the dream you have created. Um, and uh, there's only like two paths, being active or being passive. And we have both of them, you know, sometimes you just need to rest and watch something, listen to something, listen to something that you don't of often listen to, maybe create some new kind of uh, neural connections in your brain that might create a new thought pattern uh, later on when you're solving a problem. But when it gets too much, um, it becomes like addictive, like in the film Wings of Desire. I think it was called that, yeah. Um, and. Uh, and especially children, like I'm, I'm a father now, so I'm thinking about this, and I'm hearing lots of stories uh, of how people. Um, um, it's so easy to give a child something to watch, something to distract. It's practical, you know, when you need to do something. Um, I also do it. I have uh, some cartoons and programs and so on. But there's a limit, there's something like you, you have to show the other side to it. It's not dangerous in itself, like computer games don't create violent people, but then you have to question yourself why does a grown-up person sort of walk around in a, in a fake environment and kill people? Is, 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 that, is that something worth a dream? Um, or, uh, you know, watching every series that, that's come, that's coming out, uh, which is basically in the same kind of pattern, just with different environments. You know, it can be modern time, it can be the past or the future. Uh, and how about just um, not dreaming for, for some time, like really not being attached to the attractions, not being distracted. Um, for me, it's an interesting concept because I, um, I live a sort of um, monastic lifestyle. And being a monk, sort of, doesn't mean that you have to uh, be in a cave. Uh, you can be a family father and so on. In Buddhism they have that. Uh, in, in other traditions as well. It basically means that you have sort of um, um, bought into some um, concepts, maybe precepts or whatever. And uh, it doesn't necessarily have to mean that you have forced them on you. It can also be like... Uh, maybe up to, up until you, you were, like in my case, 20, 25, you thought in a certain way, you realized some things, and then you realized, oh, look, there's something 
of a tradition which uh, has dealt with these kind of um, mind-related um, um, insights of you know suffering, content, happiness, uh, bliss, and um, and so on. And I've spent times in a, in a Zen monastery. Um, so for me, like living the everyday life, being a family father, I sort of run it like <laughs> like a like a monastery. You know, keep it tip top. Um, try to stay focused. Uh, don't linger too much on attractions. Um, um, sports, movies, and all that, um, but still, it's not like um, I, I'm not looking down upon the distractions and attractions we get attached to. I have them too. Uh, we have a need for that um, because we dream naturally. But when it gets too much, we sort of enter a society which is um, exponentially much more dream time that the aboriginal people uh, had and we're not aware of it because we are in it it's easy to sort of you know watch a documentary on on some tribes and aboriginals and all that and look they have a dream time thing it's also surreal what are they talking about uh, but we live in a kind of active dream time slash telepathic society um, is telepathic the right word I don't know but we are so connected you know um, and for me I work online um, I'm self-employed so for me the more I became um, professional with that the less I actually use the devices for leisure for uh, for distraction really um, they become like tools um, and um, and also you, you get sort of fed up with the screen I think but there's nothing special to that being working online because every job now is dependent on sitting in front of a computer even doctors say that you know one per, uh, one tenth of their time is actually dealing with the patient the rest is sort of filling up the forms and uh, writing the recipes and you know the schedules and you know all that kind of stuff so the actual work is is not that much and uh, that was some thoughts about this uh, we are actually living in a in a dream time society which is far more uh, trippier than uh, any sort of native tribe ancient concept we have uh, romanticized we're actually in it uh, dreaming constantly yeah that's my observation at least uh, what do you think um, thanks for listening. Take care and all the best. Ciao.